Good evening. Where is the donkey mobile library? Well, I, I think you have ne probably have never seen a donkey mobile library, but that's what it looks like. This is a donkey mo mobile library uh, procession. In front of the procession is uh, a donkey. Uh, she's not an ordinary donkey, she's a queen donkey. She's a queen of all donkeys of Ethiopia. And by extension, she's queen of all donkeys of the world. Ethiopia has uh, probably the second largest number of donkeys in the world. And because we have so many donkeys, people in the rural areas, you know, Ethiopia is a very poor country. Uh, a lot of uh, peasants and poor people uh, use uh, donkeys to do all kinds of work. And uh, they are not even treated very well. I read a story about Portuguese donkeys who were getting subsidies from the uh, European Union that the subsidies uh, is going to stop and they're going to be in trouble. Well, I suggest that the EU uh, send all these donkeys to Ethiopia because they could be really very useful. Um, how did we come up with this idea of a donkey mobile library? I have to tell you some background stories about myself. I was born in a small village in southern Ethiopia, in a, a cattle uh, village. And um, I went to school when I was six, but in my school there were no books. We had plenty of stories, oral stories, that our parents, our uh, grandparents, our uncles and aunts told us, but we did not really have uh, books. But there were very few books that we had in the school uh, to study with. For example, there was this book uh, called The March of Times. In sixth grade, we had this book and uh, probably the second part of this book. And in this book, there were uh, different stories. You see it on the picture on the right. Who do you think that is? Alexander. Alexander, young Alexander taming uh, Besophilus, the horse, the, the, the mighty horse. So there are other stories about the you know, Greek legends and uh, Persian armies uh, and uh, uh, Dido, Queen of Carthage, and many, many other stories that has fascinated me personally. And those are probably the seeds of my love for uh, stories and literature. And uh, also at the same time, <clears throat> no, not this one, uh, not this one. There was another story in one of <clears throat> the books that we had in school. <clears throat> This story, the story of gay, gay fox and the gunpowder plot. What do, you, what do you think this story would have any relationship with me as an Ethiopian child? Well, of course, at the time I did not think about it, but I think this story has planted the seed of rebellion in me. You know, we had imp an emperor in Ethiopia, an emperor that as a young man I have uh, with other young men, wanted to overthrow. But this is a story of rebellion. If you know the story of Gay Fox and the gunpowder plot, it's a group of Catholic discontents who were uh, feeling oppressed by uh, the Protestant king and the Protestant uh, government, and they wanted to uh, blow up the parliament building. But you know, I was in sixth grade reading this story and how much influence this story had in my life. I would only realize later on because I became a rebel uh, and tried to uh, fight two uh, dictatorship or two governments, one an emperor and one a military dictatorship. But then I did not read any book outside of these stories in school but then uh, I came with this, uh, I encountered this book called Love Kitten when I was 19. And this is an American book. An Ethiopian who have studied in America have brought this book with him along with other books. And it kind of uh, took my attention when I saw it because this was a relative of mine. And I asked him if I can read it, and he gave it to me. I was 19, and I tell you, I confess to you that I was in love at that time, 19-year-old 
uh, or in love with uh, a young woman. So when I read this story, I mean, it fascinated me, and it really uh, got me interested in trying to find other similar books to read. So because of this one book, I, com I, I say that I became an avid reader, uh, a reader of, 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 of you know, all my life, uh, because this experience of reading this one uh, book or one story uh, have, uh, you know, become a reason for my reading other stories. And uh, then later on in my life, uh, I also, you know, started encountering other books. These are just examples that I'm giving you. For example, this is one uh, book, the story of uh, a man called Papillon. He's French. You probably know uh, the story. And um, I, in I encountered this story when I was young, after you know, I, sta I started reading books. And this book has been my, uh, you know, really that the books that gave me a sense of who I am, a sense of what I wanted to be. It gave me a sense of uh, self-reliance, a sense of, uh, in, you know, endurance, and uh, everything that I could, you know, hold on to. Uh, because, you know, Ethiopia was a difficult country. Uh, as a young man, there were so many difficulties uh, out there. And uh, because of reading this book, I have the strengths to endure uh, many difficult uh, periods in, in my life and in the history of uh, my, my country. So basically what I'm saying is, you know, uh, stories or, uh, you know, books are about stories. The stories have changed my life in such a way that I uh, wanted to uh, do, uh, uh, establish libraries for Ethiopian children. Uh, I went to, to the United States as a political refugee in, in 1981. I uh, studied there. I became a, a librarian. Uh, you could see the influence of all the books that I've, I've been reading. I became a librarian, uh, and I became a librarian at San Francisco Public Library. While at San Francisco Public Library, um, I encountered many children's literature. Uh, a lot of children's literature, in fact, you know, literature that I have not known before. And uh, I remember very well that uh, I encountered uh, two great uh, books and two great writers in uh, uh, the San Francisco Public Library, uh, but also other stories. Now, because of these stories, uh, I was able to feel strongly and passionately that Ethiopian children lack uh, stories, not traditional stories, but stories in books, uh, because uh, you know, those would be very important for uh, children uh, who are in school, who are growing up in this modern world. So I wanted to go back to Ethiopia. Uh, I took uh, 15,000 books in 2002, went back to Ethiopia, and established the first children's library the first children's library in the capital city of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, in my own home, uh, where thousands of children started coming uh, to read and enjoy books. But most of these books were in English. There are American books, of course. These were really good books and very nice stories. But uh, then we also wanted to uh, publish books uh, in Ethiopian languages, and uh, I uh, wrote a couple of stories that were published. Uh, and those also helped uh, the literacy level of the children. And uh, the donkey library, the, the donkey mobile library, came about uh, as a way of delivering stories or books to children in rural communities. So we came up with this idea of uh, uh, constructing a donkey mobile library. It's a cart that is pulled by uh, two donkeys. We would have about 2,000 books in the shelves that are in the four sides of the, the cart. And these carts would travel from one village to another village or from one neighborhood to another neighborhood. And children uh, literally would follow uh, the donkey mobile library wherever it goes, wherever it goes. And it even uh, gave them a purpose, a reason, to uh, at least look forward 
uh, to, to read a story or to be uh, with other children under a shade of a tree uh, where they would uh, read books and where books would be read to them. Uh, we had built about seven of these uh, uh, donkey mobile libraries. We established about 45 school libraries and three public libraries, published about uh, 13 uh, books for children in Ethiopian languages. So these are all the things that uh, we have uh, done. And uh, well, of course, this doesn't really mean we have done everything, but that's all we could do with uh, resources that uh, we could uh, gather. And most of the resources uh, also came uh, through donations uh, from uh, people in the United States and uh, other parts of the world. Uh, you know, Ethiopia being a poor country, we don't really have all the resources to do things for ourselves. Unfortunately, we have to ask for uh, help from others. And uh, other people have uh, generously been uh, helping us. Uh, still help, uh, helping us, and uh, we continue to do in small ways uh, to provide uh, books for children, uh, literacy for children, stories for children that would empower and change their lives. Uh, most of the children that came to our libraries never held books before in their lives, even when they went to school. The schools do not have libraries, the schools do not have books. So the children who came to our libraries were holding books upside down. Even though they are fourth grade or fifth grade students, they never held a book. But uh, you know, uh, because of the libraries that we built, thousands of children uh, became readers, uh, at least in, in, a, in a way that changed their lives and uh, that gave them a sense of purpose, a sense of direction, and uh, a sense of empowerment. You know, stories are really very strong in changing human behavior. The stories that we have read, the stories that I have read, the stories that you have read in many ways have probably influenced your lives, influenced your way of thinking, uh, you know, influence you in a way that would even make you a different person in terms of your way of uh, uh, thinking and way of uh, looking at the world. Uh, in my personal you know, experience, uh, this, all these things has happened to me. My point of view, my view of life, my view about uh, religion and many, many other things have changed because of the books and the stories that I have read. I, I think life is full of stories. There are so many stories around us. Uh, people are by nature prone to making stories all the time. And stories are good also because they connect people. They connect people from one culture to another. I was connected to uh, the Catholics who rebelled uh, you know, against their Protestant rulers. Um, I can re I relate it to other stories from other cultures. So, you know, stories also, in a way, bring people together and they bind people together. Uh, just even from uh, your home, reading about a different culture would give you a sense of, uh, you know, connection. So I'll end my talk here and uh, thank you for listening and I hope <laughs> this Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for your talk. Okay. We yeah, have okay. a surprise for you. Um, a good friend of yours from the past is here to talk to you, uh, Evgenios Trivizas. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> nice meeting you. We are old friends. A few years ago, we were both invited at the Stockholm International Library and had the opportunity to learn the inspiring story of his life. After a seminar, Johannes asked me if I'm the author of a book he was familiar with as a librarian at the San Francisco Library, I remember. Yes. When I confirmed that I'm, that I'm the author of this book, this book was The Three to Wolves, and the big bad pig. <laughs> a reversal of the traditional book of the three pigs and the big bad wolf. 
When I confirmed that indeed I was the author of this book, he made a surprising request. He asked me if I would accept to write a reversal of another book, a classic book, that he considered to be offensive to African people. This book was Curious George. In this story, a man with a yellow hat traps a little monkey and takes it to America. There, the little monkey, because of his clumsiness and curiosity, causes a series of disasters, comic disasters, and ends up in a zoo. Now, for Johannes and others, taking an animal from its natural habitat, transporting it to an environment that fits neither his nature or instincts, mocking and putting it in a zoo, is, reflects a kind of uh, colonialist mentality. So I accepted the challenge, and I wrote another rival book, a reversal called Glorious George. However, when I presented it to my English publishers, they were less than enthusiastic. <laughs> Egmont's picture book publisher told me, but Eugene, this was my favorite Curious George, my favorite book as a child. <laughs> and I can't understand why anyone could find it offensive. It was impossible to understand Johannes and others' point of view. And uh, uh, you may be interested to know that uh, this book, The Curious George, has quite a few famous fans all over the world. For example, this is uh, uh, a photo of the White House Christmas decorations around Barbara Bush's uh, portrait. <laughs> and uh, it seems that this book is one of the favorite books of the Bush family. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the monkey and the man with the yellow hat. <laughs> and this may explain their foreign policy, the administration oh. foreign policy. <laughs> <laughs> also, another thing that you may be interested to know is that currently, the character of uh, Curie George is used as a racist insult against President Obama. They have this is uh, the new illustration of the uh, Curious George, and they have T-shirts against, uh, against uh, Obama. Egmont's uh, picture book publisher, who had this discussion about uh, Johann's idea to publish uh, this new version of the book, gave me as a present another controversial book that despite similar objections, she continues to publish. This book is Ten Ten Tin Tin in Congo. Mm. When the artist uh, designed this book, Congo was still a Belgian colony and a quite brutal regime of this colonial regime. And in this book, uh, the inhabitants of uh, Congo uh, appear with ape-like characteristics and um, Tintin uh, kills about a dozen antelopes, uh, slaughters a, um, a monkey, stones to death uh, a buffalo, and explodes a rhinoceros with dynamite. Now, both books, Curious George and Tintin in Congo, have been the subject of quite serious controversy. Many articles, condemnations, even trials have been made because of those books. But I believe that uh, this kind of condemnations, prosecutions, library exclusions, or condemnations by racial equality committees is not a proper way to deal with a book, even if you would dislike it. The best weapon is to produce an equal entertaining rival book. And I promise to Johannes that the first edition of this book will be not in English, or Greek, but in Amharic. Amharic is the language, the ancient language of the people of Amhara. And I'm glad, Johannes, to say mm -hmm. that the Amharic edition, thanks to the support and help of TEDx, is ready. We have it here for you, for the children of Ethiopia. Oh, Oh, thank you so much, thank you so much. This is really wonderful, this is really beautiful. I thank uh, FedEx uh, Athens.
Uh, primarily, I thank my friend Eugene for uh, writing this story and for having it illustrated. I mean, it's a wonderful story. I love it. And uh, I thank uh, uh, TEDx uh, Athens for uh, uh, publishing it, for produ producing it, and giving it as uh, a gift to Ethiopian children. And uh, I, I really thank all of you for, uh, for this. This is really a wonderful moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And, and we have an important announcement. Yes. We declare today here that we start an international campaign, and we need any help any of you could offer, so that in a few years, Glorious George will replace Curious George in the affections of children all over the world, including my pub English publishers' grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you.